You don't learn to pray by praying. You learn to pray by learning it from God's word. There are vital keys that will enhance your effectiveness in prayer. And I'll be sharing them today. Engaging them will guarantee speedy answer. If you ignore these keys, your prayers will be empty, ineffective, and a waste of time. Many times people pray and they don't even wonder what are they praying about and they cannot get any results. In fact, every religion prays, hope you know. Every religion prays, whether the answer comes or not, they are not bothered. But Christianity is not supposed to be so. We are supposed to pray to get answers. So I'll be sharing with you vital keys in securing answers to your prayers. Vital what? Keys in securing answers to your prayers. You know, if you carry the wrong key, no matter how sincere you are, you can't open the door. Even if you are sincere and then you carry the wrong key to a door and you are crying, will that open the door? No. You are sincere, yes. But that door will not be open. So when you use the wrong key in prayer, there will be no answer. Now be sharing with us a few of them. Number one, thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Thanksgiving, worship, and what? Praise. The first key. Jesus said, start by hallowing God's name. Because without thanksgiving, heaven is not permitted to open. It is thanksgiving and praise to gain access to the throne of grace. In Psalm 100 verse 4, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and to his cause with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No matter the challenges, no matter the problem before you, without thanksgiving, God is not going to hear you. Oh God, you know I have problems. God said no. Enter into my gates with what? Thanksgiving. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So without thanksgiving is a protest. God will not answer because you have fasted for 40 days. Please hear this. He will answer when you ask correctly. Fasting and prayer is to reinforce your strength for exploits. But it does not mean God will answer because you're fasting. If you pray wrongly. Are you getting what I'm saying? You abuse spiritual stamina with fasting, but that cannot move God to answer you when you pray wrongly. I pray somebody will have understanding. Now Jesus concluded the prayer he taught his disciples by saying, Thine is thy kingdom, the power and the what? Glory. This means thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Therefore, begin your prayers with thanksgiving, worship, and praise, and end it with thanksgiving before God can take cognizance of what you are talking about. That's what God is saying. Any prayer you don't start with thanksgiving and end with thanksgiving is a nonsense prayer. When you want to pray, Father, I what? Thank you. And as you're ending, it's also so what? Thank you for answering my prayers. May the Lord give someone to understand it. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. So it's not, oh God, oh God, you know I'm in need of God. God said, you are protesting. Thank me first. Oh God, look at me, I'm suffering. God said, you are wasting your time. Come to me with what? Look at what I'm passing through. He said, thank me first. Otherwise, you can shout from now to tomorrow. I will not answer. God, don't you not have a need? He said, me too, I had a need. Jesus said, at the tomb of Lazarus, what? He said, God, can't you hear me? He said, thank you. To open the gates of heaven. May somebody get understanding. Number two. You must pray to the Father and also pray in the name of Jesus. 
You must pray to the what? Father. And also pray in the name of what? Jesus. In John chapter 16 and verse 23 and 24. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Very well, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. So my prayer will be to who? The Father. To who? The Father. He that to have you asked nothing in my name, ask. You shall receive that your joy may be what? Full. So if I want to pray, what do I ask? Father, in the name of who? Jesus. In John 14, 13 and 14. And whatever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Anywhere you go, prayer is offered. Not in the name of Jesus. It's occultism. I hear him say now. Somebody pray, pray, pray. You won't hear Jesus. It's occultism. That you see miracle does not mean it's from God. You must ask the Father in the name of who? Jesus. Any prayer. It is pure and occultic practice. Because the scripture cannot be broken. If you ask the Father in my name, not in Emmanuel. Emmanuel is also God with us, but you can't use it for the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't say, A, 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 B, B, be healed. No. Father, in the name of Jesus. So I hear. Number three. Pray from your heart. Pray from what? Your heart. Key number three. Prayer has to be from the heart before it can gain access to God. In Proverbs 16 verse 1, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. If I want my prayers to be answered, it has to come from where? My heart. Hannah went into the temple to pray. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 1, 13 to 20, I will read only 13. Now Hannah spake in her heart. In where? Today we have so much Pharisee prayers. People are shouting, yet they are not concentrating. Any prayer not emanating from the heart is a religious prayer. And now you know you are not praying from your heart. When you're praying, you're looking at your phone. Hello? Hello? Hold on. Are they praying? Hello? <laughs> when I'm through, I'll call you. I, when I'm through, that prayer is not from your heart. How can you be from your heart? Do you know when you're... Do you know even in church, some people are praying, some people are not look, praying. They're looking at people. How did you see the person if you're praying? That means your heart is not involved in the... Because if your heart is involved, you won't even know when somebody is around you. But when your heart is not involved, have you not seen where you're praying? You begin to think of how you say the soup, soup hi, this soup, this soup, eh? Today, I will eat you. You are praying, no? You are what? You say, ah, between a goosey or crow and a bono, which one will be better after fasting? You are praying, you are praying, you are calculating, say. My wife, she will not agree. She will be cooking a goosey. I don't know that I talk when I need to. You are praying. You are what? <laughs> that kind of prayer will not be... James 5, 16. I'll read the Amplified Classic. The B part. It said, The endless, heartfelt, continued prayer, heartfelt, of a righteous man, make a tremendous power value, which is dynamic in his work. work. The heart fed prayers. If God finds nothing in your heart, nothing will be in your hand. The prayers to come from the inside, oh God of heaven, hear me now. It's not long drawn prayers, heart felt prayers. 
Many of us as religious, we say, I pray for four hours. Believe you me, if I pray four hours, you see the result. I'm not kidding. If me pray four hours, you see it. Four hours prayer, you will see it, you will see the effect. Suppose you know we pray, the thing that the hours determines the result. Heart felt, not long drawn. No, we are bombarding for six hours. <laughs> we are not in the prayer competition. <laughs> we are not in the prayer competition. He said the heart felt prayers of a righteous man. Heart. I don't mean you cannot pray for hours or don't misquote me. But if I pray like that, you will see the... I wonder how people pray after that, nothing to show. No, no, no. Then that is not prayer. Every prayer, pray. Also watch the results of the prayer. When you pray, look back. It's a watch and pray. This is a prayer and close. Watch. When you pray, pray. I also say, this prayer and pray, is it getting? If not getting, then go and readjust. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart and try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of what? His ways. Now, before you pray, it is important you prepare your heart before you approach God in prayers. In Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13, it says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, said the Lord, Thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you an what? Expected end. He said, I have good plans for you. Then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you when you pray. But how will I answer? Look at 13. And you shall what? Seek me and find me when you shall search for me with the entire being must be inside before God will answer. Your concentration will be there. In the name of Jesus, heal your people. Bless your people. I say, bless your people. Oh boy, off the TV. Let this walk. Check the pot. What that is born. <laughs> hey, Gloria. This house girl, you hear? Check that pot. I've told you, turn down the gas. Father! Junior, lock the door. <laughs> yeah, pray, you know. Yeah, what? Yeah, pray. Your heart is not in the prayer. That's not how to pray. He said, the heart felt prayer. <laughs> there has to be a young man who used to live with us. I will hear his voice from my room. <laughs> so I called my wife one day and said, what is he praying? <laughs> you will hear it to so, I said, this guy is not contested here. <laughs> Jeremiah 30, 21. The deep part. And I caused him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engage his heart to approach unto me, said the Lord. So when you want to pray, make sure your heart is what? Off. Remove all the thoughts in your heart. All those small, small things, remove them. Focus on the prayers. Oh God of heaven. If you're spending one hour, let it be one hour. If it's two hours, let it be two hours. Know that you just... <sighs> oh, this guy never called me to now. <sighs> I, this telephone call self. I want phone ring. He said, they tell you, say, make hold on. No, you had something. Hold on. No, yes, I did pray. I know you had to be pray. How did you know that the phone is ringing? Are you are praying? No. Hold on now. I'm praying. When I feel pray, I call you. Father, in the name of Jesus, continue. God says, look at you. One of the things that distracts so much in prayers is telephone. When you want to pray, turn your phone like this. There are some calls you can't reject. Are you guys now? So if you really want to pray, either you put on silent and turn it or you off it. 
the person will realize that that period there's something you're doing. What I do, I turn the phone. But there are calls you can't, you must be forced to answer. Maybe a senior man is calling you, you'll be forced to pick the call and say, sir. So the best thing is to turn the phone off because you're communicating with the senior of all seniors. Because phone can distract you. When you're through with prayers, you see the missed call, you now call the person. Say, sir, I was, I was doing so-so thing. So I have to talk to you now. The person too will understand because he's a child of God. No matter how anointed the person is. Praise the Lord. Number four. Are you getting blessed? Yes, sir. Number one. Thanksgiving. Worship and praise. Number two. Mm? Number two. Number three. And number four. Key number four. Pray according to God's will. Pray according to God's will. That is pray in agreement with the word of God. That's what I mean. Pray in agreement with the word of God. In 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God's word is his will. That means you must have his word for what you are asking for. Otherwise, there will be no response from him. In Isaiah 43, verse 26, it said, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be what? Justified. It remind me of my word. Now, prayer is likened to a courtroom. In my life, I've only been to court premises only once. Not the, that's into a court hall. When I was in Lagos as a young man, a lawyer said he has case, and I followed him. When I followed him, the man who was with the case, he, he couldn't even talk well. The man was just bombarding him. I said, why did you bring me to court here? <laughs> and after that time, we took the one that won him as our own lawyer. Because I liked the way the man spoke. I said, I like you, Pastor, you will carry me to court. <laughs> now, prayer is like that. Prayer is what? You must tell God why. You will cite Sections upon sections, according to lawyer. According to section this, this, this. So you say, according to Romans this, Genesis this, God, you have to do this. Going to pray without the word is speaking English. If you want God to answer, you tell him why. He said, produce your strong reasons. Tell me why I should do it. Is that clear? If we pray according According to his word, Isaiah 41, verse 21. He said, Produce your cause, said the Lord. Bring forth your strong word. Tell him, tell God, this based on this, this should be done. Is that clear? You are going to tell the Lord according to your word. So prayer itself, if I tell you, the real work in prayer is not praying, no. The real work in prayer is arranging word. If you're a member of this church, you'll find out that we don't pray with that word. Is that true? All of you come to the, you can't see or just get up and say, pray! So that's what we're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> More, What people call prayer most times is just religion. It's just what? Prayer is not a small job. If you know what prayer is, before you pray, make sure you, you take time to arrange scriptures. And that's the real work. Because prayer, if you read Elijah, when he was preparing, the time to prepare was longer than the time of the prayer. Many people just think that prayer is just getting up to hey, now pray, pray, no evil, pray, no evil. What prayer is that? Pray, no evil. Do not forget. We pray, no evil. We pray, no evil. Evil fall, evil fall, evil go out, evil go out. Is that prayer? Pray now, it is written. According to Isaiah 54, verse 17, no one formed against such shall prosper. And every tongue that has one, take that scripture and pray. That's what they mean by prayer. No, no, pray. Say, anybody won't kill you, make him die, make him die, make him die, make him die. Now, nah, anybody wants to kill us, die. Anybody wants to kill us, die. What prayer is that? What scripture is, one number one kill you, will die? 
That's how we pray religiously. Any prayer without the word is religious prayer. Every prayer must be with the word. So here. If you pray according to his will, his will is the word of God. So to get in the word is the real work. Now, in John 15 verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, do you hear that? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So get hold of the world in the area you have need and commit God in your prayers for his response. Are you getting what I'm saying? There was a time, now I'll give you an instance. There was a time somebody in this church was to face a panel. And the panel was not funny. So the person came to me, said, sir, this panel is to embarrass me. I said, why? So they set up this panel because they have me and one or two persons as target. So we can never go forward. I smiled. I said, Jesus stood before Pilate so that you and I should not be judged. And I said, now, based on Romans 8.33, he said, we shall lay charge against God's elect. Therefore, that panel, you will never face it. He said, we shall lay what? Anything to the charge of God. So that means it is God that justifies. So the only person who has right to judge me is only God. No mortal man can put me in the box and judge me. With that scripture, they set up the team. That was the only person the team did not call for questioning. But if I just go now, Father, no judgment, no judgment, no judgment. What is no judgment? <laughs> this person is a member of Savage Ministries, therefore, must not appear. Is that prayer? <laughs> what kind of prayer is that? That's how some of us pray. Father, I'm a sanctuary keeper, therefore, since I clean the house, clean my life, clean my life, clean my life. <laughs> What kind of prayer is that? Father, I clean the choice. So me to clean, 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 clean. <laughs> is that prayer? And that's how many of us pray. And we are very serious. Very serious. For me to clean my life. Clean everything. Clean this sickness. Clean everybody. That is not prayer. You're only speaking <laughs> your own English. Your own what? You must take this word and give it back to God. So the real prayer is not praying. The real prayer is locating the right scriptures. So here. Yes. And that is the work. That's what? So you can see that prayer is not just enough to pray. Prayer is a work. Prayer is what? When we want to pray, we take hours to prepare scriptures. When we want to pray, it's very short. The locating the scriptures is the real work. Have you not heard Bishop Wedekbo said, when his daughter, the last daughter died, he didn't just get up to go and pray. Dead, dead. He said, sat down. I said, God, show me. He said, three scriptures came from heaven. Bah, bah, bah. Revelation. I got sit down. I have he that was dead and have the keys of hell and of heaven. He said, take the scriptures, go and prophesy them over my daughter. As they went, the daughter woke up. So it was the scriptures that really did the work. He didn't get up and say, I'm a man of God. Therefore, Father, I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God. My daughter, my I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God. No, no. He located what? So in every area you want to pray, locate the appropriate scriptures. So the real work is locating what? Scriptures. Not just getting up to pray. Number five. Pray with understanding of who you are in Christ. I'm going to share this. Pray with understanding of who you are in what? Christ. What do I mean? Have full understanding of your rights and privileges. Approach God boldly as a child of God. Stop begging in prayers. Stop what? Many of us, religion make us not to even pray well. Hebrews 4.16, shall we read together? Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come what? Did he say come beggarly? Let us therefore come what? 
unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God is saying, do you want to pray? Come to me as a child of God. Don't come to me like somebody who's a slave. Now, let me tell you, it's religious, but it's not correct. Have you heard people say, Father, we are all miserable sinners. I don't know if you have had such a religious background. Have you heard that before? Wrong prayer. It's very wrong. You are not a miserable sinner. If you commit sin, it's a confess, you fall faithful and just to forgive you. How can you now go to God? I think you're praying, you know, and we're, we're, we'll be crying. Oh God. I am God as a miserable sinner. Very, you are miserable. And you become sin again. Put the two together. Did it God say, come to me as a miserable sinner? Come to me, what? Bold. If you commit sin, confess it and go back to God. But don't go there, oh God. See us. All of us, taklated. <laughs> you further find that the meaning of takla. I have come as a miserable And they'll be crying, no? Thinking that it's religion. They'll be crying. <laughs> uh, all of you now cry. Then everyone will be crying in the church. <laughs> da. Da. Those are religion. They are what? Know your privileges and what? Right. Now I'll give you two people in the Bible. One, one was who did not one did not know his right. The prodigal son's elder brother. One knew his right. The prodigal son knew his right. The prodigal son knew what? It's right. I will arise and go to my father. Yes, I've made a mistake, but I'll go to my father. I know that I'm a child of God. I'll go back. The prodigal son's elder brother was full of religion. For full of who? He went to ask a servant in the house. He said, what are they doing in my father's house? The servant told him, I said, what they do know? He said, they are, they are doing party for your brother. Let me use modern language. He said, ah, they are doing party for that, my bad brother. Who went out, wasted money. They are doing party for him. Me, that I've been very righteous, nothing for me. He had no idea. He, had no, he did not understand the privileges he had of his father. So the first one will come to church. The kind of thing we ask of, it's even very annoying. Even today they will ask, Father, one room in Ojoto. One room, Ojoto. <laughs> Ojoto is in Dio, a ghetto in, in, in Portacot. Father, one room in Ajegule. One room in Ajegule. One room in Baltimore County. One room in Baltimore County. Lord, one room, one room. Toilet, everybody used together. <laughs> Who will live in the flat in Jerry? <laughs> Who should be living in Jerry? You're a child of God. Don't ask God like that. You come to God as if you are begging something. You're not begging God. God say, ask me boldly. Two people don't knock my door in my house. They don't knock. They don't. They just put key. Cap. It's when they end. If I'm sleeping, they can go. But they don't ever. They never. They never knock. Every other person knocks. These two people, they don't knock. <laughs> God said, enter and ask him like his own child. Stop coming like house boy. Stand by the door. Oh, oh God, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there by the door? Madam, are they here? <laughs> you there? Are they by your door? <laughs> That's a house boy. That's what? Sons and daughters don't ask. They don't open up. Blam. Mommy, give me that thing. <laughs> God said, approach him like a child of God. You respect him, but don't come like a slave. Sorry. Don't come like a what? You are not a housemate. You are a bona fide child of God. It's not here. Because many of us are so full of religion. We think by doing that, we are being holy. Nah. You have a hole. It's a wrong way of approaching God. God, prodigal son, when he said, I'm not worthy, because shut up. The father said, Shut up. Don't say you're worthy. Don't say you're not worthy. You are my child. You can I never change your identity. You are still my child. Please change your perspective when you want to talk to God. You respect him as your father, but don't go to him as a housemate. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. It's a, it's a very big problem. Many don't know their privileges and right when they're praying. They go like this. Father. I they talk to you. <laughs> help me now. Help me now. Father, you know, help me. Help me now. I'm talking to you. <laughs> See the way they suffer. Father, you said in your word, 
You have never seen the righteous forsaken on the seed begging bread. I can't be begging bread. I'm a faithful tither. My heavens must open. God said, yes, my son. You are talking. Based on your word. He said, wherever I go, I shall find favor. Because the righteous will look about with favor with shield. As I'm stepping out today, favor follow me. He said, we are correct. He said, Lord, you said, a tatter shall follow the tatter. It shall never come near me. No matter the evil happening in my office, it will never come near me. He said, yes. Good. This one knows his lies and privileges. Never approach God like a slave. I, may that slavery mentality be off your life. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm. When I want to travel, I have a mentality. That's how I pray. I say, Lord, as I'm going, I'm your ambassador. I'm approaching this country as ambassador. So whatever royalty they would have given you, give me. So when I enter a country, they don't treat me anyhow. There's no country I enter. I, before I step out, I pray like that. I say, Lord, you know I'm your representative. And anywhere you go, you were honored. So as I'm stepping into this country, I must be honored. My wife likes to travel with me. She said, I enjoy when I travel with you because you will see honor, you have big honor. Last time we traveled, this was last time we traveled to Alabama. As we arrived in Chicago, bam! Americans were here, visitors were here, they just carried me straight. I know if they carry me, they must carry two of us. <laughs> I was the first person to leave, first. Both citizens, citizens. In fact, the American who followed us he stayed one hour after. That I've left, we waited for him for. I think one hour plus before he came out. Hello? <laughs> but someone they want to pray. For that, as I'm traveling, <laughs> help me, help me, help me. When I appear, you know now, you know now I'm from Nigeria. So when they attend to you, they should attend to me. Oh, is that prayer? Talk like a child of God. Tell God that you must, you must be given royalty. Special humility. Somebody asked me, say, why do you cover your number plate? Say, do you have humility? It's in church now. I said, what kind of humility? Say, I said, what of your people, other politicians will cover their place? He said, they have humility. I said, the humility I have is too big. He said, eh. Hey. I said, yes. May I have heaven's humility? But he came to church. <laughs> He don't have funny. He said, Papa, not take me preach. Oh. I said, I will take you preach. <laughs> I said, I'm gonna take you preach you. I'm gonna preach you. <laughs> he's in church now as I'm talking, he's laughing. <laughs> Amen. Number six. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> number six. Most times we pray, but I'm gonna tell number six a little bit. Most times we pray. But you find out that sometimes you pray in a way that you don't even know what to pray about. I don't know if you have come to that point. You want to pray, but you don't even know what to pray about. You know that challenges are there, but you don't know where the challenges are coming from. At that point, change your prayer. Consult the Holy Spirit in such a case. So number six, consult the Holy Spirit in most cases. In most what? Now, I'm going to tell you practically how that kind of prayer you prayed. Now, listen. In Romans chapter 8, this one is not every time. In Romans 8, 26 to 27, it says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our what? Infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit is a make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. And he that searched the house knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. Because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. There are things which God has ordained for you that you don't know. And then you want to pray. After you pray, the one you understand with the word of God. That's why every Pentecostal must speak in tongues. He crack at that time, Satan, you render him useless because he cannot understand your language. Demons can't understand tongues. It's a communication between heaven and heaven and earth. Only God understands what you are talking about. Jesus break it. 
I pray that Jesus says, break it here, Kotale. Kuru says, break it. There may be danger. God says, it will be averted. It will be averted. It will be averted. The man coming is a trickster, but I'll, I'll open your eyes to see who he is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 14 and 15, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed. Do you hear that? But my understanding is of truth. What is it then? I pray with the spirit. And I pray with my what? Understanding also. And I will sing with the spirit. And I will sing with understanding also. The Holy Spirit helps our weakness, our short-sightedness, and inadequacies. Because you may not know certain things. It connects us with the right word that will commit God to hear and intervene. Sometimes you pray like that, the word that you couldn't remember, you just bring it back to you. Say, this word is the word you're looking for. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Learn to pray in the spirit. After you pray, you understand it. Pray also what? In the spirit. Then you, at that time, you're communicating with the Holy Spirit. He searched all things, yea, the deep things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. For God revealed it to us. For his spirit said to hear the deep, deep things of God. At that time, you are going deep to say, God, I don't understand. What is it? I'll tell you a practical thing I did sometime, long ago. Because if you don't tell people, I place people working with me, I put their names. I said, let us say, so break it here, kotale gezize. He said, this one we're going for years time. This one will stay with you, but it's very funny watching. This one is like this. This one believes in what you're doing. Because man is the most complex creature on earth. He laughs like this. <laughs> France inside. His heart pumps blood and thought. I love you. I go kill you. That is man. Man is the most complex creature. Tell you one thing with the mouth, say another thing in the heart. At that point, don't pray normal prayer. Say, who is this person? Laru Bregedia Koshanto. He will tell you, he say, this person, he will kill you. This person. Now, the thing they talk for man, not being being they talk with the two. You just keep quiet like Jesus and be fooling the person. Because you can't, that way you can't, there is no psychology that can make you no man. All of you say, there's human philosophy, it's a lie. Man is too complex. Man is what? Is the most complex creature on earth. No husband, no wife, and no wife, no husband. You only know small part. Okay. All of you are mad. What is, what's your wife thinking now? And what's your husband thinking? We, no human, even your children, you don't know them. So, the body Holy Ghost knows all of us. I don't say man is bad, so don't misquote me. But man is too what? Complex. So, when you want to, even when you want to employ people for certain places, Joseph! Le broko si akota is Joseph I want to employ. Maru says so break it here, kotale break it, says kota brakata. Joseph is to hold all my finances. Who is Joseph? Ah, Joseph will work with you for five years, but the sixth year, uh, it goes scatter your company. Sixth year, it goes scatter and pieces the whole company to shake it. Then you work with you when it's five years, he said, Can you resign? I did something that baffled our pastors. I knew four years before somebody would leave me. I knew I had four years. Then they were to buy the person car. I said, if the person does not leave on Friday, buy the motor. <laughs> the man buying the motor says, I said, what? I said, by Friday, if the person does not leave, buy the car. By Friday morning, the person came and says, I want to leave. So they said, sir, you take no. I said, do I have to tell you? I said, I knew before the person came. And I gave the person 10 million to go. In my usual way. I gave the person free car to go. It doesn't reduce me. But I knew the person was leaving. Didn't Judas know that Judas would betray him? He said, one of you will betray me. Judas said, I've made up my mind though. He said, one of you. The one who dip his hand now, 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 now. 
How did Jesus know? The Holy Spirit. And not only the negative thing, also knowing the positive things. He will tell you something to come. To encourage you for the future. He will show you things to come. So when you pray, you understand. You pray in the what? Holy Spirit. I was talking to one of our pastors. We had pastors meeting this morning. And he said he wants to leave for a country. I said, I don't leave. Oh. Pray well before you leave. And when you want to leave, live like this. Because you can leave from, they call you from pan to fire. So that's the only language. You're not from, from foam to concrete. <laughs> Let her leave from concrete to what? <laughs> foam. Make sure anywhere you're going, you pray. Even when you're traveling, after understanding, pray in the Holy Ghost. After you pray, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that's against me, judgment I condemn. You get up and stop. In the name of Jesus, you say, my son, don't move. I bought a ticket. They carry my luggage to the airport. I said, bring it back. That is ticket has been bought. I said, bring my ticket my back. Are you hearing me? So pray is not just get up. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. If you see some people pray, they will shout. <laughs> I said, who is that person making noise? You need to see. We have seen things in prayer. And now I'm holding a hand microphone, so I, won't, I can't hold. Some people have not prayed, they do like that. They clap 50 times before the prayer. They, they have not prayed the local scripture. It's prayer. Mm, mm, mm. Prayer. If they go to toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that in your confidence. That prayer be that. <laughs> All is prayer. <laughs> all is what? Prayer. And they will do it with all seriousness. They will start in their feel like they... <laughs> I say, Satan, Satan will not fear these eyes you're doing like this. Soon. You know, get time. If you like to do like this, <laughs> tell him it is written. You do all like them. All is prayer. Number seven. Finally, number seven. The seventh key is you must pray in faith. You must pray what? In faith. That's the last key for today. You must pray in faith. Refuse to doubt when you pray. James 1.6, that's the last scripture. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. You know why, why God says so as the last one? When you pray, Satan will come and tell you this prayer is not answered. If it's answered, then why have we not seen result? Tell him, shut up. God is not a man. I know God answered me. That you have not seen physical result does not mean God has not answered. Satan will want to challenge your prayers. He said, this prayer you prayed, if it is so, then why are you not seeing it? That's where many fall. He said, let him ask in faith. No, wavering is on the inside. Is where? For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and touched. When I was sick to the point of death, and I saw Matthew 8, 17, I got up and said, himself took my infirmity. I said, Satan, get out of my life. He said, go and look at the middle. Your eyes are still yellow. And I stood and I said, Satan, if you took it, I can't have it. He said, if you say so, look at the mirror. Your eyes are yellow. I said, if Jesus took it, I can't have it. My prayer I've prayed is final. He said, look again. I said, shut up, Satan. He took. I got healed. We are to do night of glory. That used to be one night of glory. And as we are to start, a few minutes to seven, on your mask, get set, go, rain opened in Portacot. When I mean rain, <laughs> woo, 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 woo. And I stood in my hotel room and I said, Satan, this is not from God, this is from the devil. Get out, you rain. Stop now. He said, Open your curtain. 
I said, Satan, if I don't doubt in my heart, so I make sure my heart did not shake. I said, I have prayed and it must stand. He said, open the curtain. <laughs> I said, Satan, this which I prayed must stand. Less than five minutes. Wow. When you pray, stop doubting. Stop what? Because he will challenge the world you have prayed. He will tell you. <laughs> if you say it is done, then look at your legs. The pain is there. Tell him, shut up himself. Duke. It's okay if he do. Check. Check. The thing is still paining you. Tell him, shut up. I have prayed. That's why you build your faith before you pray. That's why we taught faith before we take prayers. Anybody who starts praying without faith will affect you. Because when faith is in place, your prayer will be very easy. But if faith is not there, after you pray, self, you will see without it. Say, Let's pray another walk. <laughs> it's not worth <it's> it. <laughs> but don't doubt. Don't what? When you pray, don't doubt. Jesus caused the fig tree. He removed his eyes. Peter said the fig tree with that corset. Physically, did not die that day. But the day he caused it was the day he died. Some things we prayed years ago, we are seeing the manifestation now. Bishop Nebuchadnezzar said, it was the beginning of the ministry where they saw that 50,000 sitter at the base of the ministry. Beginning of the ministry. There was no sign, but that prayer has been answered before Kenala was built. Is that true? Now listen. Long ago we prayed. My wife woke up and said, my, my husband, I saw where the church occupied the next compound. Now, when she was saying so, there was no sign. She woke me. He said, I saw where our church, from our, well, we prayed that we buy all the properties. He said, I saw that we extended to the next compound. The next compound man said, we will not sell us. When I came, I said, you will sell us. <laughs> I told him, I said, what do I say? You, I won't sell you, Pastor. I respect you. If not, I, I would have, I said, you will sell us. You know why? We are prayed. <laughs> so I didn't doubt it. As he was going, I said, you know what? You will come back and sell us. Came from America, he says, I respect you. I said, You sell us. I made sure the word ended in my mouth. I said, You sell us. <laughs> <laughs> then, years after, he came on his own. He said, Sir, I want you to buy it. Within me, I said, Have you not come now for us to buy? <laughs> <laughs> so, when you pray, stop what? Doubting. Oh, you pray, it's not doubting. He will shake you. He said, I will shake you. He said, You will marry. Okay, which man has come now? <laughs> I think the other day, the other boy that said, Who say he wants to marry you? He's even not picking your course. Nobody will come. Tell me, shut up. I have prayed. Husband will come. If you will give you a job, as you said, you have prayed. Woo, which application now? Have they even remembered you? It's not your application. They say they cannot even answer you. Tell me, shut up. God is not a man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, son of man, that is you repent. With these seven keys in your hand, the end to fertile prayers has come from today. Yeah. You will never pray in futility. Your prayer must be answered. I see you living permanently under an open heaven. Yeah. The remaining days of your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. How many know that their prayers will be answered? Number one, thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Number two, pray to the Father. And also pray in the name of Jesus. Number three, pray from your heart. Number four, pray according to his will. Number five, pray with understanding of who you are in Christ. Number six, consult the Holy Spirit in most cases. And number seven, you must pray in faith. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. For the next seven minutes, Anna was left alone. Anna was what? She was left alone. She prayed her heart. She said in her heart, oh God, she was specific. She was what? So you'll be specific in the next prayers. She didn't say, give me a child. She said, give me a male child. She said, give me a male child. So you are going to be specific. You are going to do it alone. Something very unique that within this week of spirit empowerment, you know, that's when God answered you. I've noticed that every outstanding miracle, they were left what? Alone. Jesus was left what? Alone. 
even when he went with crowd, they slept. Peter, James, and John did what? Almost all the prayer that Jesus had as standing, he was alone. Elijah was what? Alone. Jabez? Alone. Jacob? Alone. Jesus? Alone. So only you. For the next seven minutes. Oh God, you look at these keys and put them in order. Oh God of heaven. Father, then be specific in one thing that after these prayers, you know you are God answered. Are you hearing me now? Don't just pray. Bah, 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 bah. So be very what? Specific. Approach one thing. Address one issue. And know that God will answer. Go to any part of the church where you are. If you're online. Now for seven minutes, I'm going to allow you to talk to God with all seriousness. From your heart. If you see your neighbor when you're praying, your heart is not involved. If you hear your neighbor, your heart is not what? Involved. Because if you're really praying, you're, you can't hear your next neighbor. Are you hearing me now? Present your heart to God from your heart and pour out to God. For seven minutes, go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. If you want to stand, you stand. If you want to sit, you sit, but make sure you're praying. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Pray also in the Holy Ghost after that.
Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Tell God thank you. Open your mouth and begin to thank him for answering your prayers. Tell him thank you. End the prayers with thanksgiving. In Jesus mind in him. Scriptural prophecies are the strongest. While I was praying, I asked him to give me a word for his people. And he gave me Joel 2, 26, 27. He said, my people shall never be ashamed. When he gives me a word, if I lift your hands, from today, none of us will see shame. <laughs> he repeated it in the two verses. He said, and my people, God does not waste words, shall never be ashamed. I decree, no one at the reach of my voice will see shame. From this moment, I declare, no one will see shame. He said, my people, shall never be ashamed. Whatever would have brought shame to any of us, today it is averted in the name of Jesus. I put to practice what I taught. I prayed the Holy Ghost and I said, give me a word for your people. And he said, 12, 2, 26, 27, my people, if you are amongst them, from today in the name of Jesus, I declare, in addition to your own prayers which you have prayed, which God has answered, I declare none of us will see shame. You know, lack and want is shame. Poverty is every shame. Not getting mad is shame. Whatever would have brought shame, you will never see it. In the name of Jesus. He said, my people shall never be ashamed. Shame will never be part of any of us. And so shall it be.